Welcome. This video is for our rising sixth grade families and students, and we're excited to welcome you to middle school. And hopefully this short video will help uh, you understand better what your middle school experience will be like. First, for our introductions, my name is Jason Cottle. I'm the principal of Bexley Middle School. We also have Mr. Price, our assistant principal, Mrs. Boussold, school counselor for last names A through K, Mrs. Louise, school counselor for students last name L through Z, Mrs. Lynch, our administrative assistant, and Mrs. Klingelhofer, our attendance secretary. Just like at each of your elementary schools, we have a great and active middle school PTO, and they have a couple important roles. One of the things they do is they raise money for some of the extraordinary experiences that we're able to provide our students. Um, one of the big ones is our eighth grade Washington DC trip, ensuring that all students have access to that trip and that it remains affordable for families. Um, they also serve as a connection uh, between parents and also a liaison to the school. And so they're often good uh, thought partners as we talk about different issues in the school and in the community and how we can partner together. And then they also support teachers and students for additional needs as requested. So as certain special situations come up, they are a great asset to us. So when you think of middle school, what is a word that comes to mind? You're probably thinking of words like um, awkward, uh, uncomfortable, um, you know, first boyfriend, first girlfriend, um, uh, step up in academics, trying to find your place, uh, first time doing clubs or sports or certain activities, um, bouncing between friend groups. Um, these are all things that are pretty common to the middle school experience. And um, I think this really sums it up. Uh, Zoe Deschanel says, nothing could be as hard as middle school. And we recognize that. We recognize that this is a challenging time um, in life and in school. And um, that is our job is to help your student navigate uh, life and school and friendships and extracurriculars and all those kind of things um, in a way that they can uh, begin to explore what uh, it is that they're interested in. Where do their talents lie? What, what are they passionate about? So that when they leave middle school, uh, and, and leave high school, they have some uh, ideas of what they want to do afterwards. We uh, know um, that because it is so trying, we don't expect middle school to be the best time of your child's life. We just don't want it to be the worst time. And so we really work hard to make sure we have um, the options and supports in place. So the middle school philosophy, this is what differentiates a middle school from uh, a junior high or other models of, of grouping students at this age. And it really revolves around four themes, developmentally responsive, equitable, challenging, and empowering. And so we try to be developmentally responsive in our relationships um, and try to be both that, that support and that push that kids need. Uh, we understand the importance of relationships and that students need to feel safe and understood before any real learning can occur. Um, we try to make sure that we have individual and um, whole grade and whole school supports in place to make sure that it is equitable and accessible for all. Academics do tend to be a step up for our students. More and more is required of them, and that is uh, developmentally appropriate. That's what, what this journey is about. And so uh, we do try to make sure that students have opportunities to explore and uh, be pushed academically. Um, and then finally, um, in order to be empowering, we need to provide our students with opportunities to explore the world, to apply what they know, um, to see who and what it is they want to be long term. Um, some of the supports that we try to make sure we have in place um, around that academic rigor is we're always thinking about like what is what is the next step. We know that eighth grade is not the end of the line for our students. It's, we're just in the middle of this journey. And so we're trying to make sure that they have the academic preparation so that they can make choices uh, down the line. We're not advocating for particular choices or particular pathways, but we want to make sure that 
kids are making decisions that keep those doors open for whatever it is they want to pursue long term. And then um, our curriculum really does uh, need to value the whole child and not just see students as um, academic vessels, but also um, nurturing um, their other needs as well. Um, academic supports, just some examples of some of the things. So for our study halls, we are uh, intentional about how we place students and group students for study hall to make sure that that can be a maximized time. Um, multiple opportunities to learn. So whether it's office hours or it's access to different teachers during study hall, those are ways that we try to make sure that if kids need additional um, time or support beyond the typical class period, they have access to it. And then multi-tiered systems of support. This is really a, uh, a building level thing. And this means that we have systems and structures in place to try to um, catch students before they fail and um, help us pick up on trends or things that we think um, individual students or whole groups of students might benefit from and make those adjustments uh, proactively as, as much as possible. Some of the social emotional supports that are in place is we are very fortunate to have two full-time counselors. Not very many schools our size have that. Um, access to a wellness space where students, if they are needing some time for uh, self-regulation, we can help support that. Um, our counselors, teachers, um, and other support professionals do push into classrooms with social emotional lessons and just helping kids understand themselves and how to navigate um, their own thoughts and feelings, um, but also uh, the social spaces. Um, students in each grade level take a health course. And then in seventh grade, we also have a class uh, pathways to success, which is really a kind of student skills, getting to know yourself type course. Uh, positive behavioral interventions and supports. This is something that exists throughout the district. So your students are probably familiar with it in one form or fashion from the elementary school. And that just means that we both teach the expected behaviors. We don't make the assumption that students come in knowing how to uh, behave in each space, but we, we take the ownership of teaching those things. And then uh, we reward students for meeting expectations. Um, it's that idea of caught being good um, and try to put the highlight on the kids that are doing the right things as much as possible. Um, School-based athletic teams begin in seventh grade. So that's something that we'll begin to, to talk more and more about um, towards the end of the year. And then finally, um, we are fortunate to have a nationwide children's hospital uh, school-based counselor here. And that's uh, somebody we can make a referral to if either um, the family or uh, staff are seeing a need for that higher level of support within the school day. So school counselors do function a little different at the middle school than they do at the elementary school. And so one of the frequent questions is how is it that a student gets access to a school counselor? And so students can um, stop by or email and, and set up an appointment with a school counselor. Uh, teachers sometimes can also pick up on, hey, there's just something a little bit off today um, and have a counselor check in and make sure make sure everything's okay. Uh, parents, uh, you family members, you can make a referral to see the school counselor as well. You know, you may be aware of something that's going on outside of school um, that could be impacting your student. And so we, uh, we take those referrals from parents as well. Um, likewise, administrators, if we see something going on. And also through that MTSS system, sometimes we'll identify students who are in need of um, additional support, whether it's a quick check-in, whether it's some kind of a small group or, um, or other activity to help uh, do some skill building. Here's kind of a snapshot of all the things our school counselors do, um, and it is quite extensive. They do everything from serve as the 504 coordinators to um, connecting students and families with resources in the community, um, pushing in to do social emotional learning lessons, um, school links, which is a look at uh, college and career opportunities. So there's a lot of different roles that our counselors play, but it really is uh, a really holistic look at the student and what supports they need. Lunch and recess. Um, so we have a lunch period from 1207 to 1256 and students can either eat in the cafeteria or weather permitting in the stadium. Um, and we do as much as possible encourage students to get outside 
and um, enjoy the, the fresh air. Um, we have recess then on the field. Uh, we go outside for recess um, just about every day, unless it's actively raining. We, we get the kids outside, get them that fresh air, get them that movement that just helps uh, our day go smoothly by, by getting out some of that energy. And then each day there are intramurals um, that are done by different grade levels. So sixth grade may have kickball today, and then seventh grade may have it tomorrow. So that rotates through and there's a schedule posted at the beginning of each week so students know when it is their turn to participate in intramurals. Students are able to leave campus for lunch. Um, it is not my favorite thing. And it's, uh, again, not something that students have to do. We have a tremendous cafeteria and cafeteria staff. Um, I eat there um, every day that I eat lunch, as do most of our staff members. So it's a great, uh, convenient and high quality option for, for our families and for our students. Um, if your student is going to leave campus for lunch, they need to have a note on file and you do that uh, with our attendance secretary and you can say they have permission for the day or you can give permission for the whole year. But this is you signing your student out and taking responsibility for them for the remainder uh, of that period. We do not monitor off-campus activity. We don't monitor, you know, if they're getting in cars and, and getting rides with other people. The, um, and this is truly you signing them out at the um, beginning of lunch. And then they do have to be back in class by the, by the start of the next class period. If students aren't able to accomplish that, then they will lose their um, ability to leave campus for lunch. Again, um, something you guys should have a real serious conversation as a family about if that is the right option for your, for your child. Um, and um, we would say it's not necessary, but we understand some families make that choice. Personal device rule. So your student does not need a cell phone for school. They're not, don't believe what they're gonna tell you. They don't need it. With our Chromebooks uh, that have been provided through the Bexley Education Foundation, um, every student has the technology they need for school. Um, it, if you are choosing to provide your student with a cell phone or social media, it is gonna become a full-time job for you to monitor it and to know what is going on. Um, kids can really get themselves in a lot of trouble with these things and um, it can create a lot of drama at school, which we would prefer not to have. But um, we understand there, there are uh, times where kids um, will have cell phones and need cell phones. Our rules really revolve around um, students not having personal devices, that's cell phones, that's uh, smart watches, those kind of things during um, during instructional time. So from bell to bell, students should not have their devices. Um, they are able to use them between classes, during lunch, uh, after school, before school, but not during class time. And so what should students do with their devices if they do bring it? Uh, we understand some you know, kids are going home to empty house and, and families wanna be able to communicate and make sure we've arrived safely. Um, so if that's the case, students need to make sure it is turned off and out of sight. That can either be a backpack or that can be in a locker. Uh, they would need to bring a lock for that. But again, um, students who have devices during the instructional time when they're not supposed to, those devices uh, get taken and put to the office where they can be collected at the end of the day. The Chromebook expectations, like I said, we're fortunate to have those um, as a learning tool and students are responsible for charging their Chromebook each night so that it's ready for the next school day. We do not have the ability or the capacity to have every student charging their Chromebook in classes each day. And so um, they need to make sure they've taken care of that at home, uh, especially when we utilize them for things like standardized testing. Um, students should only use a Chromebook as directed by their teacher during class time. So the expectation is that Chromebooks are put away, not being utilized, um, unless a teacher says, uh, hey, we're gonna bring it out for this activity. And using a Chromebook is a privilege. It can be taken away if students are using it in inappropriate or distracting ways. So we spend a lot of time, um, especially in sixth grade, talking about expectations around Chromebooks because we know it's an incredible temptation for students uh, to disengage from class. Students are assigned a locker near their first period class. 
Many students are just carrying their backpacks, um, and that is uh, that's okay. We have uh, we we allow that, um, but we do encourage kids uh, to utilize their lockers if possible. One of the things that tends to work is to have kids carry their morning belongings with them, and then at lunch switch over to their PM belongings, so they're not having to carry everything simultaneously. When you pick up your schedule, their locker number will be printed on that, and students are only permitted to use their own lockers, um, and like I said, they are able to carry backpacks to classes. So uh, we operate on an A and B day schedule. This primarily impacts our music classes, band, choir, orchestra, as they meet every other day. Um, but here's how the A day, B day schedule works, so you know. And then um, the good news is your students will understand this way faster than you will, and um, they'll have it. They'll have it figured out by the end of the first week. So if the first day of the uh, of the year is an A day or a B day then we just keep going with that pattern. So um, if uh, looking at this schedule, um, B day is the first day, we're gonna go B A B A and keep going. Um, if we have days that we know that are gonna be off school, um, like in this case, the 18th and 21st, then we just skip those days and it'll get, keep the B A pattern going. If we were to have an unexpected day off school, so for instance, if the 23rd were to be a snow day, we would have the 22nd as an A day, um, the 23rd, that day off would, would be nothing, and then Thursday would come back and that would still be an A day. So once we set the A day, B day calendar, it remains for the entire year. We don't make adjustments um, um, so that it's not confusing. So this is an example of how that A day, B day schedule might work. And as you can see, um, the schedule is the same on both days with the only change coming on that, uh, that study hall band period. This is our uh, daily bell, bell schedule. It will likely look uh, very similar next year, um, but uh, may, maybe a few tweaks here and there, but that is in general um, an 8.35 start and a 3.30 end. So what do gifted students look like at, uh, at the middle school? It is a little different than elementary. Um, so our overall goal, gifted or not, is we want to pair student needs with teacher strengths so that our students can really grow the, to their maximum ability. And so many of our teachers are um, either certified uh, for gifted or have taken additional coursework. About 40% of our student body does fall into the gifted range um, in one area or another. So um, that's something that a lot of our staff are trained and prepared for. There are some specific courses and you will be getting communication home if your student is recommended for one of these classes. So in English, we look at students who have either a gifted identification in reading or superior cog. Those students would be in a gifted English class. There is not a um, naming difference for those classes. They look the same, but um, on the back end, um, we know it's gifted. And then, uh, like I said, we will communicate with that, that with you uh, in the upcoming weeks about what recommendations your students may have. Uh, math 6-7 is not strictly a gifted class. It's an acceleration um, or a uh, compaction of the curriculum. And so students that we identify with math data from the past two years, if they qualify um, at the 85th percentile or above as an average for the last two years, then they go into that math six, seven. The first year they do all of the sixth grade curriculum and half of the seventh grade. And then in seventh grade, they do the remainder of seventh grade curriculum and all of eighth. So that by the time they get to eighth grade, they're one year ahead in taking algebra one. Um, and then um, students with superior cognitive identification have the opportunity to take a nine week class called discovery six. Again, if your students are eligible for those things, we will be reaching out um, shortly. One of the things that we need you and your student to do is to complete this sixth grade schedule survey. There's also a link in the email. And so this uh, will let us get some of those choices for your students selected out. There's not a lot of choices in sixth grade, primarily around the band, choir, orchestra, um, but uh, we do wanna start getting that input and students will need to do this from their 
school Google account uh, or else they wouldn't have access to it There's because of the permissions. So um, please work with your student to get that, get that completed. So here's some upcoming events and dates. We do want those schedule requests by the end of the month. So please make sure those get done. Our counselors will begin visiting fifth grade classrooms to help introduce uh, a variety of topics um, and start answering questions. It's always interesting to see what the rumors are and what the kids have questions about about the middle school. Um, and so our counselors start with that visit to their classrooms to get to know them and, and answer those questions. And then later in the spring, each school will have a visit to the middle school um, for a half day to walk around the building, get a tour, um, hear from a panel of eighth grade students, um, just a, a neat opportunity to kind of visualize themselves in the space. Um, PTO will be once again offering a supply sale where you can order prepackaged supplies, and that is due June 1st. If uh, you do not want to buy the prepackaged supplies, which is fine, then we will also have a list of supplies so that you can purchase those on your own. Um, uh, I think it's important to note, you know, for this and for, for any other activities, um, it is really important that our students all have access um, and opportunity to participate. So if your family or you know a family that's struggling um, to even get like basic school supplies or with different fees or activities, um, let us know. We have uh, the resources um, both internally and within the community to meet um, just about every need. So we, we want to make sure kids are showing up and feel good about themselves and have the things they need. We don't want a kid to show up the first day of school and already feel like, oh, well, I don't have the supplies. I, I'm, I'm not uh, prepared for school. So we will do everything we can to make sure students have those things. And then there'll be probably a few summer updates via email. Uh, nothing too uh, crazy, I hope, but a few summer updates. And then we will have a schedule and supply pickup on um, August 8th, the Thursday before school starts. And so if students pre-ordered supplies, they can get those, they can get their schedule and walk through the building. Um, we also do our student pictures that day. And so um, kids can get their picture taken, get their ID. And it's just nice to get that task out of the way before school starts so we don't have to use a school day doing that. Um, if students miss any of those things, if they're out of town for August 8th for some reason, then there will be opportunities for makeup pictures and um, to pick up schedules and supplies. Um, no problem. We will, we will make sure everyone has what they need to start the school year. Um, and then our first day of school is Thursday, August 15th. And um, it's always a great day and exciting day to welcome students back into the building. So this is something uh, that we ran across in Washington, D.C. a number of years ago, a, a sticker um, with this quote from the Apollo 13 mission and uh, failure is not an option. And, uh, you know, at first that, that kind of you know, strikes you and, and you love the fact that, um, you know, if I, was, if I was in a space capsule trying to return to Earth, um, I definitely would want that to be, um, be people's mottos. But in middle school, um, we, we look at that a little different. Um, it, it's a requirement. Students have to try and fail. We have to have kids go through those experiences because we know that's what leads to um, uh, better student resiliency, um, better student um, mental health, better student life outcomes is if they have those opportunities to stretch themselves, to try something new. And even if uh, they fail, they have a great safety net around them. So we want this to be the time in life where kids uh, try things and, and fail um, so that they can learn from them um, and while they have a support system around them. So some really important contact information. All of our staff, our emails are our first dot last name at vexley.us. And so you can always reach um, myself, Mr. Price, uh, counselors, um, teachers, however, but um, that all is through first dot last name at bexley.us. And then a really important email, something I would go ahead and bookmark now, is msattendance at bexley.us. This is where you send um, 
hey, my student's not going to be at school today, uh, illness, uh, out of town, whatever those things are, um, this is where you communicate that. And so uh, uh, the nice thing about that is it goes to multiple people. And um, so if somebody is away from their computer or not in that day, it's not missed. So we really encourage you to, to bookmark that and utilize that. Um, also, a nice thing is if you're picking up a student early um, for an appointment, then you can email this. That will then have uh, the secretary generate a pass for students to leave class at the designated time. And then your student can come right outside and meet you. Um, you that way you don't have to park. You don't have to come and check in uh, and do all those things. Um, so it'll really save you some, some valuable time um, and headache if uh, when you're when you're picking up a student um, because parking is very limited around here. Well, thank you for spending a little bit of time uh, watching this video. I hope it's been informative and we look forward to getting to know you and your student much better in the uh, upcoming year. Thanks.